The arrest of a 59-year-old Long Island architect, Rex Hoyerman, shocked the world as he was hiding in plain sight for over a decade. His arrest brought relief to residents of Massapequa Park, a suburban town seven miles from Gilgo Beach, where the remains of 10 adults and a child were found more than a decade ago. Rex turned Gilgo Beach into a cemetery. So sad. Rex was also using different burner phones to set up dates with sex workers before they turned up dead. Then he would get rid of the burner phone. He was also arrested with a burner phone. Everybody stopped going to Gilgo Beach at night. It was an intense vibe that someone was committing serial crimes on the island. On Thursday night, the man known around his neighborhood as the creepy guy. Rex was walking down a busy street in New York during rush hour, looking like an ordinary businessman. He was dressed up in his suit and tie with a bag slung over his back, unaware that there was a group of undercover officers dressed up in suits behind him getting ready to arrest Rex. At 8.30 p.m., the officers surrounded Rex and arrested him steps away from his Manhattan office. Everything happened so fast, but Rex had no clue that investigators had him under surveillance watching him the whole time, waiting for him to emerge from his office at the end of the day. Time was of the essence to get Rex off the streets because he was a danger to society and a threat to the victim's families. Rex was still contacting call girls, and investigators were scared that he would strike again. Rex went to court where he was arraigned in a Long Island courtroom. Rex cried out in the courtroom, I didn't do this as he appeared in court, but the families of the victims weren't buying it. Rex is responsible for the deaths of Melissa Barthelemy, Megan Waterman, and Amber Costello, all women in their 20s who disappeared in the Massapequa Park area in Long Island before their bodies were found during a separate missing person investigation in 2010 for Shannon Gilbert. Officers walked Rex out of the courthouse in handcuffs. He was wearing a polo shirt and khaki pants. He is being held without bail as prosecutors made an argument that he shouldn't get bond. They pointed out to the court that Rex recently searched for sadistic materials, child pee, plus images of the victims and their relatives. How creepy. He pleaded not guilty. In January 2022, a task force with investigators, criminal analysts, prosecutors, Suffolk County Police Department and Sheriff's Office, New York State Police Department, and the FBI came together so they could focus on solving the cold case. They looked over every piece of evidence and all the interviews that were done in the past. Two months later, on March 14, 2002, they discovered that a witness had seen the person responsible for Amber Costello's death driving in Chevy Avalanche, and they discovered that Rex had the same car registered to him at the time of Amber's death. This discovery led this task force to start investigating Rex. But in order to get more information on this guy, they had to get over 300 subpoenas, search warrants, and other legal processes to get the evidence they were looking for. They got Rex's cell phone bill to compare his cell information and location to the victim's cell locations on the burner phone he used to arrange the meeting with three of his four victims, the disappearance of Maureen Brainerd Barnes. Maureen Brainerd Barnes was last seen on July 9, 2007, in New York City. On July 6, 2007, her cell phone was contacted by Rex's burner phone. Between July 6, 2007 and July 9, 2007, there were 16 interactions between this burner phone and Maureen's cell phone. On July 9, 2007, the last cell site location for her cell phone was at approximately 11.56 p.m. in Midtown Manhattan, near the 59th Street Bridge. Her cell phone had no further activity until July 12, 2007. Three days after her disappearance, Rex made two outbound calls from her cell phone, checking her voicemail from a cell site location near the Long Island Expressway in Islandia. The Disappearance of Melissa Barthelemy Melissa was last seen on July 10, 2009, in New York City. On July 3, 2009, she was contacted by Rex on his burner phone, and again on July, on July, July 9 and July 10, 2009. On July 10, 2009, cell site records indicate the burner cell phone traveled from Massapequa Park to Midtown.
Later that evening, her cell phone traveled from midtown Manhattan to Massapequa, with the last cell site location being in Massapequa on July 11, 2009, at 1.43 a.m. Rex used Melissa's cell phone to make an outbound call, checking her voicemail from a cell site location in Freeport. On July 11 and July 12, 2009, Rex used her phone and made two more outbound calls and checked her voicemail again from cell tower locations in Babylon. On July 17th, July 23rd, August 5th, August 19th, and August 26, 2009, Rex used Melissa's phone after he took her life to taunt her family. He was at his office when he called them with her phone and told them that Melissa was dead. He did some sadistic things to her, and he was the one responsible for her death. Rex's cell site locations of Melissa's phone during these taunting calls were all in Midtown Manhattan near his office. The Disappearance of Megan Waterman Megan Waterman was last seen alive at the Holiday Inn in Haupage, New York, on June 6, 2010, at 1.30 a.m. On June 5, 2010, Rex used his burner phone, which had just been activated that day, to contact Megan. Megan called his burner phone on June 6, 2010, at approximately 1.31 a.m., which is around the time she was captured on video surveillance exiting the Holiday Inn for the last time. Following that communication, the burner cell phone had no further phone activity. However, cell site records show that Megan's phone traveled to Massapequa Park, with the last cell site location being in Massapequa Park at approximately 3.11 a.m. near Rex's house. The Disappearance of Amber Costello Amber Costello was last seen alive on September 2, 2010, leaving her residence at 1112 America Avenue in West Babylon during the late evening hours. On September 1, 2010, the day prior to the disappearance of Amber, Rex used a burner phone to contact her. On September 1, 2010, he contacted her phone at approximately 11.33 p.m. and 11.34 p.m., during those communications, the burner cell phone connected to cell site towers in West Amityville and Massapequa Park. Thereafter, the burner cell phone traveled to West Babylon, near Amber's house. Rex contacted her phone at 12.05 a.m. on September 2, 2010. According to witnesses, around the time of these communications between the burner cell phone and the phone, on September 1st and 2nd, Rex showed up at Amber's house in West Babylon, New York. After he entered the home, a ruse was executed on him by a person pretending to be the outraged boyfriend of Amber, and the client left, but she kept the money. Based upon interviews, that client fits the description of Rex. He was described as a large, white male in his mid-forties with dark, bushy hair and big oval-style 1970s-type eyeglasses. A witness described him to police as appearing like an ogre. Furthermore, a witness noticed a first-generation Chevrolet Avalanche parked in the driveway of the residence. According to the witness, following the ruse, this client said he was just her friend, tell her I'll give her a call, and walked out the front door. Eventually, investigators realized that Rex matched the witness's physical description. He lived close to the Long Island cell site, and he worked near the New York City cell sites where other calls were captured. After Rex was identified as a suspect in March 2022, authorities placed him and his family under surveillance while they were piecing together evidence. They eventually got DNA samples from discarded items on January 26, 2023. A team later gathered a swab of Rex's DNA from leftover crust in a pizza box he threw in the trash. A surveillance team was watching Rex and saw him throw out a pizza box with leftover pizza crust near his office on Fifth Ave in Manhattan. The pizza box was sent to the Suffolk County Crime Laboratory for analysis. On April 28, 2023, a detective hand-delivered a portion of male hair that was found on Megan that had been preserved as evidence to the same lab where the pizza crust had been tested. On June 12, 2023, the forensic lab compared the mitochondrial DNA from the pizza and the hair and determined that the DNA profiles are the same specifically that 99.96% of the North American population would be excluded as matches to the hair. 
Rex's hair was recovered near the bottom of the burlap utilized to restrain and transport Megan's naked and deceased body. Additionally, hair believed to be from Rex's wife was found on the three of the victims. Investigators got Rex's wife DNA while they were doing surveillance. They waited until someone put the garbage out then. They found bottles with her DNA. Two female hairs were on Megan. It was found on tape wrapped around her head. A female hair was also found in tape used to wrap burlap around Amber. A female hair was detected in a belt buckle found on Maureen's body. The hairs, found in 2010, were degraded and DNA testing at the time couldn't yield results. But as technology progressed, mitochondrial DNA testing allowed investigators to make the connection. The victim's remains were out in a tough environment for a prolonged period of time, so there was not a lot of forensic evidence. On February 24, 2023, a forensic lab concluded that one of the DNA profiles from the bottles matched the forensic evidence retrieved from three victims. The testing indicated forensic experts were ruling out more than 99% of the North American female population and tying the hairs to a female member of Rex's household, concluding they belonged to his wife. The female individual belonged to mitochondrial haplogroup K1C2, but the DNA of Rex's wife could have been on the suspect's clothing or in household items he was using, like tape. Evidence shows his wife and children were out of the state when Rex took the lives of the three women. At 1.18 a.m. on September 2nd, after the ruse, Rex used the burner phone to send a text message to the phone saying, that was not nice, so do I get credit for next time? Phone records show that the burner phone was located in Massapequa Park within two minutes of this text message being sent. According to a witness, later the next day on September 2nd, 2010, Amber was again contacted by the same client that was in the house the night before with the avalanche. Further, Amber told her friends that Rex wanted to see her again, but he didn't want to come back to the house because of her boyfriend. On September 2nd, 2010, at 9.32 p.m., Rex called Amber's phone. During this communication, Rex's burner phone used a cell tower in Midtown Manhattan. Rex's burner phone traveled to Massapequa Park and had contacts with Amber at 10.39 p.m. and 11.05 p.m. cell site records for the burner phone indicate at 11.17 p.m. the phone traveled to West Babylon to Amber's house. Subsequently, Amber left her own cell phone behind, walked out the front door of the residence, and was seen alive for the last time. Shortly after she left the house, a witness observed a dark-colored truck pass the house, specifically coming from the direction Amber had walked towards. Rex was sending his wife away on trips during the times he wanted to commit his horrible crimes. Records establish that Rex's wife was out of New York for the disappearances. Travel records show that on July 8, 2009, Rex's wife departed the United States for Iceland. On August 18, 2009, she returned to the United States. His wife was out of the country during the time of Melissa's disappearance. Based on cellular telephone billing records, on June 4, 2010, Rex's wife traveled from New York to Maryland. On June 8, 2010, she returned to New York from Maryland. She was out of New York State during the time of Megan's disappearance. On August 28, 2010, his wife traveled from New York to New Jersey. On September 5, 2010, his wife returned to New York from New Jersey. His wife was out of New York State during the time of Amber's disappearance.